people, dried out land and climate. A dangerous combination for wildfire in the West. Wait, hold up, hold up, stop, go, 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 go. Interestingly, people are responsible for all three. Tim Brown is the director of the Western Regional Climate Center and professor at the Desert Research Institute in Reno, Nevada. He's working to understand our rapidly changing wildfire environment. In many places around the West, we've had a long history of what we call fire exclusion. In other words, it's been an, an aggressive fire suppression policy to go in and extinguish fire. But this leaves behind a lot of available fuel for more fires, especially in areas that have seen some of the biggest growth in home building. More people, more fire risk. Sheriff's Office! One example of this is the 2017 Tubbs fire in Santa Rosa, California, just outside wine country, striking in the middle of the night, becoming a race against time to save lives. Where are you at? Right Come on, she's disabled. All right, all right, let me get her feet, let me get her feet. Oh, don't hit me. It wiped out entire neighborhoods, becoming the second most destructive and fourth deadliest fire in California history. If you look at the fire perimeter, you can go back to 1964 to uh, was called the Hanley Fire, nearly identical fire perimeter. Um, much less damage, much less costly. And now in a warmer, drier world with growing drought concerns, these fires are showing explosive behavior. Neil LaRoe is researching high impact weather in the western United States, focusing on how fires are creating their own weather extremes like tornadoes. Fire generated tornadoes are um, similar to ordinary tornadoes in the atmosphere, but they're kind of on, on steroids. Driven by intense heating from fire, creating updrafts as high as 130 miles per hour. And we're also seeing that the most intense form of these are linked to fire-generated thunderstorms. A fancy name is pyrocumulonimbus. The warming climate and drought all a backdrop to this extreme behavior. It's lengthening our fire season and giving us a longer window where we're in that kind of critical time period where fuels can combust very rapidly, release a ton of heat into the atmosphere, and drive some of the extremes that we're seeing. Hotter, more intense fires creating their own weather and making rapid runs toward communities. All of this makes reaction time even more critical. One tool that is greatly helping is the Alert Wildfire Camera Network. The crazy idea there was we take our seismic network and we would put cameras up on our communication towers and we would try to help the uh, Forest Service and others understand the situational awareness, discover fires potentially, and our crazy idea now has blossomed to almost a thousand cameras on two continents. Graham Kent is one of its developers and director of the Nevada Seismological Lab. He says this not only saves time, but helps to deploy proper resources. And then they can basically scale up or down the resource really right away. So they don't have to wait for the first fire truck to get on scene to say, oh my God, you need to send you know, three uh, tankers, a couple helicopters and, and 10 trucks, right? They can see that almost from the get go. When asked what kind of difference the cameras make, he goes back to building out the network after the Tubbs fire. Sonoma County Sheriff's Office, mandatory evacuation order, leave your homes. There weren't any cameras and it was a very confusing environment. And the next thing you know, this, this uh, wave of flames are coming. Just two years later, a fire nearby was confirmed in the first 10 minutes. An evacuation started immediately based on what the fire looked like on the cameras. Even with all this technology, people living in these fire prone areas know more needs to be done from warning, firefighting tactics and mitigation to prevent more destruction and deaths.